video we're going to do a different style of point of inflection or stationary point question. Instead of giving you the name or the equation of the starting curve and then asking you to analyse the stationary points, points of inflection and thereby do a sketch of the curve, what they may do is this sort of thing. They may say here is a curve, I'll give you an example, y plus 2x cubed plus ax squared plus bx's plus c. In other words, they only partially give you the equation of the curve. You don't know how many x squareds we've got, that's a is going to be a number. You don't know how many x's we've got, b is a different number, and you don't know what the number on the end is, that's plus c. And what it will be your job to do will be to take some information that they give you in terms of stationary point information or possibly point of inflection information and use that information to actually work out the values of A, B and C, which means you are actually going to go backwards and work out the starting equation of the curve. So if we take that as the information they give you about the curve, that's all you've got. They're also going to tell you, to help you get to what A, B and C are, they're going to tell you this. They're going to tell you that there's an inflection point at... 3 over 2 comma 11 over 2 and as well as that they're going to tell you one more bit of information that the curve passes through another point not one so they're giving you all this information now in this question they're not giving you any information about stationary points sometimes they do sometimes they don't in this question no information about stationary points my job is now to work out A, B and C from this information. Now, there are three letters in this, A, B and C, I don't know. And that will mean you're going to have to do three bits of work to get to the values of A, B and C. And sometimes in harder questions, those three bits of uh, that, that, that work, which involves three bits of calculation work, may give rise to simultaneous equation work. You might have... Uh, two equations with A's and B's in both equations to solve simultaneously. Or you might even have, technically, three equations and they've all got A, B and C in each one and solve the three equations simultaneously. However, this is a very typical example and let's see how this plays out when I go through the work. OK, so inflection point at that. There's no mention of uh, uh, stationary point information. Right, well, if I know there's an inflection point at 3 over 2, 11 over 2, what I'm going to do is work out dy by dx first of all. Differentiate this as it stands. The 3 to the front means 6x squared when you differentiate. 2 to the front means you're going to get 2 times the a. a is just a number, so 2a, x to the power 1. So the ax squared becomes 2ax. a, remember, is a number, so it just multiplies the 2 plus bx, differentiate, you get b. Differentiate, so you get nothing. So there's dy by dx. Now I'm not going to put that equal to naught because that would be true for any stationary points. But I have no information about stationary points. I've only got information about points of inflection. So I do nothing at the moment with that. Instead, what I'm going to do is differentiate again to get the second derivative. 6x squared becomes 12x plus 2ax, differentiate, you get 2a. Differentiate plus b, remember b is just a number, that begin, becomes nothing. Now, for stationary points, it must be true, if you recall previous work, that that is equal to naught. So, at inflection point, not stationary points, at inflection points. So that must be true for inflection points. Well, I do know information about the inflection point. It is 3 over 2, 11 over 2. So I know the x value of the inflection point. So if I let x equals 3 over 2 in this, you're going to get 12 times 3 over 2 plus 2a's are equal to 0. So if I work out 12 times 3 over 2, the 2 and the 12 cancel to give 6. 6 times 3 is 18. Um, 18 plus 2a's equals nothing. So from this you can see that 2a is equal to minus 18. a turns out to be minus 9. 
So the first bit of information, which was taking the inflection point, actually gives rise to the first answer, a equals minus 9. So certainly not a problem with having to use simultaneous equations or whatever. A falls straight out. Happy with that. Right, so how do we find B and C? Well, we need to do two more calculations. So go back to the inflection point, 3 over 2, 11 over 2. If that's an inflection point, it must actually lie on that curve. So if I was to sub x equals 3 over 2, y equals 11 over 2, back in the original equation with a's, b's and c's in, the resulting statement that comes out from this must be a true statement because the point lies on the curve. It's an inflection point on the curve. So what I'm going to do now is say at 3 over 2, 11 over 2, I'm going to take the equation of the curve, which is this, and I'm now going to substitute in these values into this, and the resultant, resulting statement will hopefully give us some information about A and B and C. So, here we go. Y, that's 11 over 2, equals 2 lots of 3 over 2 cubed. X is 3 over 2. Plus A. Well, A, don't forget we've found it, is minus 9. X squared, 3 over 2 squared. Plus B, I don't know B yet, times X, 3 over 2. Plus C, I don't know C yet. So we get this equation coming out, and it's got B and C in. Two unknowns. Let's just tidy up things. On the left, 11 over 2 equals... If you cube 3 over 2, you're going to get 27 over 8. The 8 on the bottom cancels with the 2 there to give 27 over 4. Plus times a minus, and that will be a plus. Multiply together to give a minus. This gives 9 over 4. 9 times 9 over 4 is 81 over 4. Plus 3 over 2b plus c. I don't like all of these fractions. So what I'm going to do is get rid of the fractions by timesing everything through by 4. If I times this by 4, the 4 on the top and the 2 on the bottom would cancel. To get 2 on the top times the 11, you'd get 22. Times that by 4, you get 27. Times that by 4, negative 81. Times that by 4, the 4 on the top, 2 on the bottom cancel to give 2 on the top. 2 times 3, you're going to get 6Bs. And then plus times that by 4, you get 4C. Let's now take everything that we need to to the other side. So it becomes minus 27 on the other side. And that goes over, becomes plus 81. And you're left with 6B plus 4C. So 81 plus 22 is 103. Take away 7, uh, 27, I think it's 76 you get 6b plus 4c. Divide by 2 perhaps, 38, divide by 2, divide by 2. So you get a statement coming out, but I can't work out from that at the moment what b or c is, because there's two unknowns. So this second statement, I can't do anything with yet. Call that number 2 and leave it alone for now. Go back up here, call that one number 1. That was a equals 9. This has got two unknowns. Leave it alone for now. Right. I need to do a third bit of work to help me get to B and C. Right. What is this third bit of work? Go back to the question. You're also told that the curve passes through this point as well, 0, 1. So I'm going to do the same sort of calculation as I did for this point. At 0, 1, we have this starting curve. And I know if I substitute in x equals 0, y equals 1 into this, a true statement must exist, because that point lies on that curve. So y is 1 this time. x is nothing. x is nothing. x is nothing plus c. This is very nice. Out from this, straight away, comes that c is 1. So I, sometimes when you do this sort of thing, you'll get a statement coming out which has B and C involved in it, and you need to solve these two equations simultaneously to get what B and C are. But not necessary here. 
equation 3 gives you that C is 1 straight away. So I can now work out what B is from this here. So equation 2 is going to give us that 38 equals 3 B's plus 2 C's. Well C is 1, so 2 1's are 2. So take the 2 over, 36 equals 3B when you take the plus 2 to become minus. Divide by 3 and you get B is equal to 12 and there is the final answer. And so the original curve, which had the equation, which was that, if you were asked to write it down, the original curve would be y equals, well, it began 2x cubed, I knew that. So I can write that as y equals 2x cubed. Um, and then it was plus ax squared, well, a was minus 9, so you had minus 9x squared plus b axes, so you had plus b is 12, 12 axes, and then plus c, plus 1 on the end. And there is the starting equation of the curve. And that would be a typical A-level question whereby you're given some information about stationary points, or in this case inflection point, and you're asked to go backwards and work out the precise equation of the curve.